Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a video where I'm going to talk about all of the fantasy series that I would love to start in the future, hopefully as soon as next year. I previously did a video showing you all of the first books in fantasy series that I currently own, and it was quite a lengthy video. So you may be asking yourself, Jesse, how dare you have the audacity <laughs> to even think about all the other series that you don't own that you want to start when you have so many that you do own that you need to get to. And I would agree with you, how dare I? <laughs> but as a book reader and a fantasy fan, I cannot help myself. And I see new and shiny books and I just want to read them. I would love to hopefully get through as many of the first books and fantasy series that I do own uh, by the end of this year, maybe into next year. But if you're wondering what I'm looking to prioritize after I get through a big chunk of those books, this is the list I have to share with you today. But before we get into talking about all of the fantasy series, I want to give a huge shout out to Dossier Perfumes for so, so kindly collaborating and partnering with me on today's video. Dossier's mission is to make premium fragrances accessible to everyone. They realized that perfumes were being sold for way more than they cost to make. So for those of you who have felt like you can't afford some of the luxury scents and fragrances out there, Dossier is a fantastic place to try to get your new scent because all of their scents are inspired by luxury fragrances. So when you shop their website, you can actually see for every perfume, the inspired by luxury fragrance. So for example, Woody Oak Moss is inspired by Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle, and Gourmand White Flowers is inspired by Victor and Rolf's Flower Bomb. So I love that they very clearly tell you what that inspiration behind the scent is. It also will always give you the top, middle, and base notes of each perfume, as well as the concentration of it, so you know exactly what kind of scent you're getting. The other fantastic thing I love about Dossier is it is completely risk-free because you can order up to five cents at a time. Shipping is always free if you order three or more bottles and all orders are risk-free and returnable with or without a sample. So if no sample is included, you can simply test out the full size bottle and you can try each fragrance before making any commitment. So you can return any bottles you choose not to keep within 30 days no questions asked. Dossier also understands the importance of brands creating meaningful change in regards to sustainability. So all of their packaging is made of 100% recycled and recyclable corrugated boxes, as well as their bottles are made of 100% recyclable glass and they are plastic free. So again, it's a great mission that this company has. And then once again, I'm super happy to be working with them. So thank you so, so much to Dossier for partnering with me on today's video. Now, without further ado, let's get back to talking about some fantasy series. A couple rules to this list that kind of make it so that it's narrowed down quite a bit. Uh, the first rule is it has to be a completed series. So I, I don't have any books on this list where it's just the first book that's out right now. It's just partially out. I really am trying to prioritize books that are completed series because if I enjoy them, I just want to go ahead and read straight through that series. I really hate having so much time pass in between books and series because I forget so many details and I find myself needing to go back and reread previous books. So it has to be a completed series and I'm not including any duologies. So it has to be more than two books in the series. So that being said, let's get right into this list. The first is The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham. I've heard amazing, amazing things about Daniel Abraham in general, but more specifically about The Long Price Quartet. I've heard it's a little bit 
different in how it's written because it's a little dense in its like economics and its politics but that's something that actually quite intrigues me uh, I, I think that that might be something that really works for me in a book I, I love when we focus a lot on the political and like some of the economic aspects of a fantasy world uh, so it sounds like something I would love and just the way people talk about it it's always so many people's like underrated fantasy pick so I really would love to get to Long Price Quartet. Next one I have is Threadlight which starts with The Voice of War by Zach Argyle. This is a self-published fantasy trilogy that is now complete and a lot of people say that if you loved Black Prism or Brandon Sanderson, you'll probably really enjoy this. I loved Black Prism. I love Brandon Sanderson. I'm probably really going to enjoy this. I, people love, love this trilogy. And it's it sounds like it deserves all the hype that it gets. So I definitely want to check this one out. I love a good magic system. I love when authors get to play around with really unique and cool magic. So this is one that's really high up on my list to hopefully prioritize once I get through some of my other books. The next one I have is The Wounded Kingdom. This starts with Age of Assassins by R.J. Barker. Now, I do have another R.J. Barker book on my TBR, his newest release, The Gods of Wordwood. And depending on how I feel about that book, this may get bumped down uh, because if I don't love his writing style in that book, Maybe I won't want to prioritize his other series because I've already tried to read The Bone Ships by R.J. Barker and I wasn't a huge fan. It just didn't really work for me. But Seafaring Fantasy just isn't my favorite in general. So I wanted to give him another shot and I've heard Age of Assassins is very different from The Bone Ships and is more like a coming of age story. And so I really wanted to check that one out. But now that I have this new book by him, I'll wait and see how I feel because <laughs> if I still don't love his writing style, maybe he's just not going to be for me. Okay, the next series is is breaking my rule. It's kind of breaking my rule, but, but give me a second because I'll explain. It's The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Now, this is not a completed series. I know that, uh, but there are so many books out in this series that there is no way I could probably catch up to this series before it gets completed. So I think by the time I would finally read this series, I think it would be completed. Maybe. We'll see. So Dresden Files, so hugely popular. It's one of the most popular urban fantasy series ever. And I've heard mixed things about the first book, Stormfront. And a lot of people have said that if you don't like Stormfront, keep going. It gets a lot different. It gets a lot bigger in scope. And a lot of the characters go through a ton of development through the books. I mean, this is a huge series. So I can imagine how much it changes from that first book to the now latest book. Uh, and I've just been wanting to check it out. It's so hyped. I want to see what all that hype is about. So definitely want to check out Dresden Files and... I know once I do get into it, it's quite the undertaking. So it's been a little bit intimidating <laughs> to, to get into. And the books aren't particularly long. It's just so many of them. So I have to find the right time to start Dresden. The next one I have is the Queens of Renthia series, starting with The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. I've heard incredible things about this series. I've heard that the magic is really cool. The world is really cool. I've heard mixed things on the second and third book in the series, which is why I think I haven't prioritized it sooner. But enough people have now said how much they enjoy that first book that I'm very intrigued by it. And I do think the writing style sounds like something I would really enjoy. It sounds like this one very often is said to be a good bridge book between young adult and adult fantasy. And sometimes that's exactly what I'm looking for because if I'm reading dense fantasy after dense fantasy, having something a little bit easier to read, it maybe not quite so complex, is nice to have. Sarah Beth Durst is just an author I've been wanting to check out um, as well. I, I know she has some other books out besides just this series that also sound really, really good. So definitely want to check out uh, her books soon. 
The next one I have is the Drenai Saga by David Gemmel. This is a backlist fantasy that is, I think it was originally released like in the 80s, 1984. Uh, so David Gemmel is like one of those classic fantasy authors. I want to check out some more of these backlist fantasy releases. Uh, and I've heard amazing things about Legend that it's just this classic feeling fantasy book that is so much fun. I definitely want to check out the Draenei Saga. I want to check out more backlist in general um, from the fantasy genre because I've really been more focused on reading newer releases and catching up on things, you know, are popular right now. But I also kind of want to balance that out and make sure I also read some of these more classic fantasies. So definitely Legend and the Draenei Saga in general is on that priority TBR. The next book I have is Pact and Pattern, that series, which starts with The Hand of the Sun King by JT Greathouse. And honestly, it's it's Petrick who put this on my radar and he raved so much about this first book that I was instantly intrigued. And I, I don't even know too much about it. I think it is more of a coming of age fantasy, uh, but Petrick's kind of glowing review of it has definitely made me want to prioritize it. And it now looks like the third book uh, has now either come out or is very shortly coming out. Yeah, it comes out this year in August. So by the time I would get to it, it would be a completed series for sure. And I'm very intrigued by it. So I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it. Sometimes it's kind of fun to go into these series that aren't as widely talked about and see if maybe you can find like a hidden gem uh, that you can really kind of start shouting from the rooftops about. Pact and Pattern is definitely one I want to get to. Live Ship Traders, starting with Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I tried the Farseer trilogy. I did not get through the entire trilogy. But I have heard that The Live Ship Traders is quite different than Farseer because it is told in third person, it is told from multiple characters' point of view instead of just one, and it sounds like the pacing of Live Ship might be a little bit quicker than Farseer. So I'm hoping that if I read Live Ship Traders, I can fully get behind the, the Robin Hobb hype. With Farseer, it didn't happen, but again, I want to give her a second chance because she's so beloved and just so iconic in the fantasy community that I, I definitely feel like I need to do my due diligence and just make sure to give her the fairest shot I can. So this is one, definitely want to get to it. It'll probably be sooner than a lot of these other books because of the amount of hype and the popularity and the fact that I do just have Farseer fresh in my head, I kind of want to go ahead and dive into Live Ship and see if that works better for me. So we'll see when I do finally get to it, but I, I do plan on for sure reading this before I dismiss Robin Hobb as, as not being for me. The Loom Saga uh, by Elise Kova. So this is one that starts with Alchemists of Loom. And I'd heard about this book. It had come out several years ago. And I'd heard it was steampunk. And steampunk fantasy, the idea of it, I love so much. But I've never read a steampunk fantasy that has really worked for me. But the idea of it, Oh, it has such potential. Like, I, I want to love a steampunk fantasy so, so much. And this particular one is by an author who is mostly known for her self-published work and mostly known for her young adult work. Uh, I think the first being, it's called the Air Awakens series uh, that she's most known for. And she's recently come out with some other very popular, like, fantasy romance books. But the Alchemist of Loom, I haven't really heard anyone talk about. And I just so badly want to read a steampunk fantasy that I enjoy. So I want to give this one a shot and see if maybe this is the one that could make me love steampunk. Because I, I love the idea of it. I just haven't found the exact story that I've been hoping to find. So if you have any great steampunk recommendations, please leave them down below because... I would love to check out some other 
recommendations around steampunk fantasy. The next one I have is on the opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum where this is truly, purely because of hype, I want to check this out. The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. A Grace of Kings being the first book. Oh my gosh. Everyone is talking about the Dandelion Dynasty right now. And everyone is talking about how incredible the sequel books are. I, I have just heard nothing but praise for this series recently. And I've heard mixed things on the first book in particular. Uh, the first book, a lot of folks say, is slow. It's a prologue. It sets up the world. So the pacing is, is not as quick. And then everyone talks about how good the sequels are once that first book establishes everything. So I think that this is one where I have to be patient with it. And each book is quite chunky. So it's one that has been very intimidating to me to start. Uh, I want to make sure I'm in the right headspace. I want to make sure I have the proper time to dedicate and focus to this series when I do finally pick it up. Because it sounds like it could be a potential favorite series of all time. I just have to make sure I'm in that right headspace so I'm fully focused on it. So Dandelion Dynasty, for sure, want to check out. So curious about all the hype. Seven Waters by Juliette Marillier. This is the uh, the first book being Daughter of the Forest. And everyone seems to love this. Uh, everyone who reads this seems to absolutely love it. It's a fantasy romance. It sounds like it's very cozy. Uh, and it sounds like something I would love. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to the camera? Hi! Do you see yourself? Hi! Hi! Got Woody. Okay, we got Woody. Thanks for visiting! I don't remember where I was, but Seven Waters, definitely one I want to check out. Uh, I've heard Reagan from Peru's Project love this. I've heard Abby from Abby Salter love this. Uh, so many people seem to love this, so yes, definitely on my list to check out. The next series I have is Ash and Sand, and this is another self-published fantasy. This one's by Richard Nell, the first book being Kings of Paradise, and this series is one I've heard incredible things about. Uh, I've heard it's very much a grimdark fantasy, which is not something I read a ton of, but I haven't heard that this one is overly grim where it would potentially bother me. And I have been wanting to check out some more grim dark fantasy. Uh, really the only one I have checked out is the most classic of them all, the First Law Trilogy. So, and I guess um, Game of Thrones <laughs> would be grimdark as well. Uh, but yeah, so I wanna check out more grimdark. This one sounds like it could have a lot of potential. Everyone seems to really enjoy it, the folks that do read it. it's a It says it's a dark, bloody, coming-of-age story shaped by culture, politics, and magic. It's a low fantasy trilogy. So really want to check it out. I think it sounds great. Next series I have is Temeraire by Naomi Novik. And this is one that starts with His Majesty's Dragon. It is basically the Napoleonic Wars if they had dragons. And I think that that sounds so, like so much fun, <laughs> like a historical fiction kind of fantasy with dragons. I mean, how how can you go wrong? And Naomi Novik, I've read the, the most popular works by her, I think, are Spinning Silver, Uprooted. I've read both of them. I really like her writing style. So I would love to check out her, her fantasy series now and see if I continue to really enjoy her writing style. But from what I have read from her and what I've heard about this series in particular, I think I could really enjoy it. So definitely want to check out Temeraire. The next one I have is The Chronicles of St. Mary's. And this one is by Jody Taylor. The first book is called Just One Damned Thing After Another. And I have heard about this book from Kitty G, whose channel I will link down below. She is the only one I've heard talk about this, and she loves this series. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. It's kind of a historical fiction fantasy that has time travel elements in it, which I think could just be a lot of fun. And it sounds like the writing is quite cheeky, kind of has this like fun tone to it. So I really want to check this one out. Uh, again, it's, it's one that I haven't heard a ton about, but the way Kitty G had talked about it definitely made me want to check it out. All right, two more that I have. The first being Night Angel by Brent Weeks. I love Lightbringer. 
I love Lightbringer. I love The Black Prism and the second book, The Blinding Knife, especially. But the entire series, I really enjoyed. So Night Angel was his first trilogy, and it now has had a continuation added on to it. And it has gotten reprints, which are great. Uh, so Night Angel is one I definitely want to check out. Brent Weeks, I want to see if he's kind of an auto-buy author for me. His writing style just totally works for me. Uh, and I, I find myself very easily turning the pages. Even with these huge chunky books that are in Lightbringer, I found myself just so easily flipping the pages. So I really want to check out Night Angel. I've heard it has more cool magic in it and a lot of people prefer it over Lightbringer, I guess, apparently. Uh, so I definitely uh, want to see if this is one that could potentially be an all-time favorite. And sorry, the, the first book is The Way of Shadows in this series. The last series I have is another self-published one that has been so incredibly hyped. It's so popular. It might be one of the most popular self-published fantasy series ever. And that is Cradle by Will White. Michael Nip is the one who sold me on trying out this series, so I'll link his channel down below. The first book is Unsold, and I've heard, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to love this, uh, but I've heard so many good things at this point, and I have heard that it is a progression fantasy where each book you're following a character power up and get stronger and stronger. And I've never read something like that. So I am so curious and so intrigued by this concept and by this series and by the hype that I just want to check it out for myself and see what I think. Uh, so again, I don't know if I'm going to love this. I have no kind of reference for whether or not this is going to be for me. But enough people have talked about it now that I'm like, now you've got my interest peaked. I got to check it out. So definitely want to see what Cradle is all about. And it does help that all of the books are quite short. <laughs> so it's not quite as intimidating, even though there are quite a few of the books. I think right now it looks like there are 12. <laughs> um, the, the books, it sounds like, aren't very long. So it's not as intimidating as something like A Dandelion Dynasty, which is only four books, but they're humongous. So... <laughs> Very curious to check this out. That is the list of all of the fantasy series I don't own, but I would love to prioritize next year, maybe trickle into the year after that. Definitely want to check these out in the future. I've just heard so many great things. Did you see any on this list that you've read before? What do you think I should prioritize over the others? Please leave those comments down below. And then what is one fantasy series that you would love to get to within the next year? Leave those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to. And if you want more information about exclusive content from me, you can check check out the Patreon information in the description box down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!